When is this work project going to be over? I don't know how much more I can take, but the end is on the horizon. Hi, and welcome to Quilt Meets World, where we have adventures in piecing and joy. I'm Russ. Come on into my sewing room. I'm almost done going through the billions of lines of data uh, so that we can, you know, sign off on that. And then I only have to go through it one more time as we go live in production. Uh, I say almost because every time I get closer in one area where things are out, it breaks another area. So I have a meeting on Tuesday with the consultants to figure out what's going on because everything needs to be signed off and finished by Wednesday. And that's UAT. They're starting to go live in production. So as they get the data loaded, I will have that opportunity to go in and do my final checks to make sure everything migrated fine to production. And who knows what's going to happen after that, if we're going to continue to have to support it or if somebody else is supporting it because nobody seems to know. And, you know, I, I don't want to be building templates that somebody else is going to run because the moment that it breaks and if we're not involved in any of it and we have to talk about it and they say, okay, how is this broken? I'm not going to know what to do because when you're out of it you forget but you know hopefully that is soon um yeah we'll see riley on the other hand as we want to get into more fun stuff is the bestest dog i mean you know it you've seen the pictures you've seen the little videos and stuff how awesome she is but fourth of july she just laid there on the couch, not caring about the fireworks or anything. Unlike Percy, who ended up, you know, vanishing for the night. <laughs> but yeah, she was just laying there, just like, okay, yeah, whatever. There's banging stuff going on. As she was laying there, though, I got a little bit to wondering about all the puppies that are at, like, doggy daycare overnight and stuff and how they were handling the noise. Spoiler alert, most of them didn't like it, which is kind of expected. And it was apparently a rough night for the doggos and the humans that were making sure that they were all going to be okay. Percy got a little bit upset again yesterday. <laughs> I had to corral him into his carrier and take him to the doctor's office to get his monthly silencia injection for arthritis. He somehow gained a little bit more weight, uh, so his chonkiness has grown. I, I don't know how he is gaining weight because he's on his weight management diet, and I feel like he's starving because every single time it's time to fill his bowl up for his next meal, he's like, I need food, I need food, I need food. So... I think we have an appointment coming up this month for his annual. Uh, I only know based on, you know, vague memories of a year ago. And uh, so I think the annual is coming up. And when it does come up, I'm going to be asking the doc and be like, okay, he's been on this weight management food for several months. He's gaining weight and I'm giving him exactly what you told me to give him what's going on <laughs> here in my sewing room it's been a lot of fun thursday uh during the few hours i managed to get in here uh, i was basically cutting uh, i had a few things going on this weekend that needed cutting for so i got to cutting Friday morning, I did a surprise live here on my channel with my friend Stephanie of Stephanie Stitches. We worked on month two of Bumbleberry Pie, and my blocks are not convenient. Oh, they're over there. So I would go get them. I do have pictures of them in the weekend review that is coming up, so you can look for those. Uh, 
We worked on, like I said, month two of Bumbleberry Pie. It's a block of the month by Nancy McNally using fabrics from the line Bumbleberries by Lewis and Irene. I was so proud of myself. I got perfect points in the center pinwheel. I mean, spot on, you zoom in, it's like right there. And then as I was getting further along, I did the flying geese backwards. They're not ordinary flying geese. Uh, they had one side of the triangle had to match the pinwheel and the other side was a different color. When I laid them out, the color was on the wrong side. <laughs> and I was like, okay, on one hand, it's a cool looking block, but on the other hand, it's not what it needs to be. I had choices though, because, you know, nothing is permanent until it's been cut. Uh, my first choice was to rip the flying geese out and redo them. That's eight flying geese that I've had to do. I didn't particularly want to do that because all the seams were on the bias and uh, it's hard enough to make sure you don't stretch when you're sewing. It's even harder to make sure you're not stretching when you are ripping. So I said, no to that. The second choice I had, Stephanie gave me. She said that I can just rip the center pinwheel and rotate the half square triangles and get them so that they, the half square triangles lined up with the flying geese colors. I was like, that's a good idea, but that meant I was going to lose my perfect points. I mean, yeah, I was like, do I really want to do that? The third choice is to remake the flying geese. And I really thought about that, but I didn't know how much extra fabric we were going to have with this kit because, you know, the instruction or the fabric requirements say one thing, and I hadn't added up all the months to see like what each month thought that we needed. And I certainly wasn't going to go through and look at all of the cut pieces. So I had a conundrum. I ended up pulling out Excel. Okay, the Google Docs spreadsheet, because, you know, I'm not paying for Excel for myself. <laughs> uh, and I just went and I took all 12 months of the pattern and added up the fabric requirements that each month said. And then I compared that to the total fabric requirements that were on the back of the pattern and uh, subsequently um, what we received in our kits. And they didn't add up to the same thing. Uh, if you used 100% of the fabric from each month, we would have been couple yards short of fabric but I also know that we aren't using a hundred percent of each fabric each time that we need it so uh, like if it says we need a fat eighth of a uh, fabric cut in the instructions and we cut just you know two four inch squares out of it we still got plenty of fabric there I mean it's not a ton of fabric but it's still plenty so what I'm guessing is that the pattern is assuming that you are going to continue to use all your scraps as you get further and further along. Um, I expect that because that is the most efficient way to use fabric, but it is also extremely frightening because if you cut wrong, <laughs> And you don't know if you're going to have enough fabric at the end. So I'm sitting here trusting the fabric designer and, or the pattern designer and saying, you know, I know we're going to have enough fabric, but I'm still a little concerned. And because of that, uh, it kind of left me into two options now at this point. Buy more fabric and remake the block or reverse the pinwheel. I chose reversing the pinwheel because, um, yeah, getting up to the fabric shop because it's incoming. It's like a 45 or so minute drive. 
I was like, I don't want to take that trip right now. So I said, you know, I'll just redo the pinwheel. My center points aren't quite as perfect as they originally were, but it'll still work. Uh, I may also end up remaking the block at some point in the future when I know how much extra fabric we might have. Um, just because it feels backwards to me. Uh, I know that a pinwheel can go one direction or the other. And, you know, it could be one of those North <laughs> Northern Hemisphere pinwheels versus a Southern Hemisphere pinwheel. Uh, I don't know. But, like I said, uh, I think I'm going to end up going up to Threadbare to buy more of the fabric. Just because I'd rather be safe than sorry. <laughs> On Saturday, I had my 11Zs Live where I worked on week two of the Fort Worth Fabric Studios as the crow flies so along. Uh, I didn't have any gaffes with that block. Um, yeah, it just seems like lives and gaffes just seem to happen and go together. <laughs> uh, it was a sawtooth, saw, sawtooth star. Words are hard sometimes. And I managed to get through it really nicely uh it was fun to make and since i had no points that i needed to really line up that came together really nice uh, i'm really excited to see what week three is going to be involved for us <music> things uh i got a few fun things happening this week this coming wednesday at 7 p.m eastern on my channel there will be the july installment of the social review the social review is the brainchild of steven from the idiot quilter and is hosted by helm walter stephanie of stephanie stitches shannon of slay arts and me this month's topic is going to be sewing machines have you wondered what sewing machine we use and why? Or have you wondered about certain features that are advertised and how they might help you with some of your uh, piecing? Or have you just wondered what our dream machine is? Come on over this Wednesday at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Eastern and chit chat with us and you can have all your questions answered. Also, this Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern, I will be sewing up week three of the Fort Worth Fabric Studio Halloween Sew Along called As the Crow Flies. Uh, it's a continuation from this past Saturday's 11sies. And um, yeah, we have a lot of pieces in week three. So I'm kind of interested in seeing what we are going to be building with these. 
I'll find out this week with everybody else. Guess what? I kind of have Monday and Tuesday off this week, giving me a six-day weekend. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how I managed that, but I did. I say kind of because I still have a bunch of stuff that I need to do around the house. And uh, I do have a work meeting on Tuesday that I have to be a part of just so I can manage to get all of these data tie-outs finished before Wednesday when they're due. But I should be able to get enough time in here for sewing, so we'll see what I get to do. On Monday, I'm definitely going to be watching Stephanie's tutorial on the next Fort Worth Fabric Studio blog for As the Crow Flies. Uh, I need to watch it, that way I am ready for Saturday. I have learned that when I watch her tutorials, I have more in my head as to what is going to be going on and try to make fewer goofs. Uh, on Monday also, I have the HVAC folks coming for my annual maintenance. So I need to make sure, you know, they are all happy. And speaking of my HVAC, uh, I was reminded this week with Time Hop that it was just at a year ago now that the 40 nights and 40 days without air conditioning started. Uh, I'm totally enjoying the cool air coming out of my air conditioning right now, though my system has been doing a couple odd things recently. So I get to talk to the folks tomorrow about it. Tuesday, uh, I'm hoping to get some long arm work done. I have quilt backs and uh, quilt tops done and some backings ready. So uh, hopefully it's just getting time onto the long arm, although I just now realized I probably need to get some batting. So um, maybe a, cha a trip to the big box store is going to be in my future. Possibly, you know, Monday morning if I have time. We will see. <laughs> uh, and then also at some point this week, I need to run up to Threadbare the local quilt shop that I bought the block of the month for Bumbleberry Pie. Uh, as I said earlier, I did the math on our um, fabric requirements and we're probably gonna be using every little scrap of fabric. So I just want to make sure I have a little bit of extra fabric. Uh, that way, you know, if I make a little bit of a goof, I have that little bit of extra stuff to spare. Uh, Stephanie wants the same, so I will be grabbing a little bit for her as well. Um, and it's easier for me to go up there in person than to order it online because online they have a minimum uh, cut requirement that is not there in person. So I can just go grab all the bolts and say, you know, cut me these little pieces. And then when I get them back to the house, I can cut those in half and send Stephanie her half and keep my half. So I think that's just gonna be a little bit easier. Um, I could also ask them at the shop to cut two individual cuts and not leave me to have to cut everything in half. We'll see how busy they are when I get up there. If it's a Saturday, I'm gonna make it as easy on them and just say one cut. If I end up going Tuesday, then um, I may end up being able to say, hey, yeah, it's a little bit quieter, probably. So maybe I can get the extra cuts. Again, we'll see. Anywho, I think that is going to be it for today's ramblings. I hope you were entertained a little bit with my weekly shenanigans. I know for a fact that the fur kids was your favorite part, but you know, we all have our little bits and pieces that we enjoy. If you wouldn't mind doing the things for the YouTube algorithm that it enjoys, that would be awesome. Ringing the bell next to the subscribe button will let you know when I go live on Saturdays. It will also let you know when I go live this Wednesday for the social review with my friends and also when I upload any other videos throughout the week. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and an awesome week. Until next time, stay happy and keep stitching.